Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to talk about biomass and the risks and the possible rewards. But first of all, some people get confused on what exactly biomass is. But first of all, what are sustainable technologies have we got available to us at the moment? Hydroelectric, very well proven, and there is a very big market for run of the, run of the river uh, hy uh, hydro still to be tapped. Wind turbines we've just been talking about. Wave power is still in its infancy. Geothermal, well proven, and now being introduced in various parts of the country. Photovoltaics, we know a great deal about. Pressure retarded osmosis, the new kid on the block. Uh, lots, of, uh, lots of interest there, a lot of technology to go into it. Anaerobic digestion has been around for quite some time. And finally, biomass. What is biomass? Using flora-derived material as an energy source. Now, I'm going to look at two particular types of biomass. Primary use fuels, which are energy crops, and secondary use fuels. Let's talk about the first one. Why is it carbon neutral? Well, it takes energy from the sun, it takes nutrients from the ground, it stores carbon, we chop the trees down, we change it into something we want to use, and at the end of its life we burn it, so releasing the carbon back to atmosphere. But is that always good? I'll show you another very similar slide, doing very much the same thing. This, this time, instead of an ordinary tree, we're looking at a palm oil plant where every year we can take the, the palm nuts and uh, process it and turn it into oil. Now that oil can be used as a foodstuff or it can also be used as a fuel. Easy to use, it can burn in a boiler, it can produce steam. But is there a downside of that particular thought? Yes, a palm oil plantation that used to be a rainforest. At this moment in time, in Borneo and Malaysia, an area of 1.5 square kilometers is lost of rainforest to palm oil plantations every hour. That is an area the size of Birmingham every three days. So I'd hardly call that sustainable. So we go on to the further primary use fuels. I'll go through it quite quickly because we haven't got much time. Short rotation coppicing, cropped every three years. Miscanthus, cropped every year. Short rate rotation forestry, cropped every 10 years. And the various oils. I've already spoke about palm oil, but there's also rapeseed oil. So this is short rotation coppicing. It takes up land, but the good thing about short rotation uh, coppicing, it tends to be willow that goes on second-rate agricultural land, i.e. waterlogged land. That's where it grows best. But the trouble is, on waterlogged land, it's very hard to get machines of this size onto the land. Miscanthus. Now, that's got to go on prime agricultural land to grow properly. It's a good fuel, it burns well, and it can be cropped every year. And last, oilseed rape. You all will have been driving around the country and seen the yellow fields. <clears throat> I was on a, uh, an aircraft from Southampton going to uh, Ireland, and the aircraft went right up the middle of the country and turned left at Manchester. I was absolutely amazed at the amount of land that I saw that was turned into oilseed rape. The yellow fields were all over the place. But why does that cause us a problem? The population of the UK at the moment is 260 people per square kilometre, as opposed to France, which is our nearest neighbour, at 119 people per square kilometre. The UK's self-sufficiency on food is 60%. France is 137%. So what France can do, they can grow energy crops. 37% of their land can be turned into energy crops without affecting their uh, reliance, their, their self-sufficiency. Every hectare that we use for an energy crop means another percentage point import of food. 
So in the UK, it, energy crops aren't exactly good for the country. But it's different in every part of the world you go to. Every country has got different priorities. And I was just showing what our priorities could or should be. But also we've got further stresses on the land in that people want to build houses. And they tend to want to build houses on greenfield sites. And that is a further input on the land. So secondary use fuels, forestry waste, spent grain, straw, chicken litter, waste wood. Forestry residue. The trunk is used for something else. A 20, year, 20 to 30 year old trunk is probably used for paper. A 40 to 50 year trunk is used for building material, pallets, etc. But that only forms just around under 50% of the tree. The other 50% is waste. The roots, the stem wood, the branches, the tops. That can all be burnt because after the forest has been through, this is what it looks. You can't replant that until you've cleared it. So clear it and burn it. It's a very good source of sustainable energy. But the problem is, as soon as you start burning those trunks, then you're out of sustainability. Because it takes between 20 and 50 years to grow that tree. In a biomass plant, it takes less than two minutes to burn it. Also, the roots. At the moment, the roots are very rarely dug up. But it's a very significant part of the tree. And the roots have got a higher calorific value than the trunk, because they're denser. Grain. Now, this is a distil uh, two distilleries, one in Ross Island, one in Cameron Bridge. We take the grain. The grain is made into alcohol to make whiskey, etc., and vodka, and all the rest of it. But the residue that is left is a solid. And it's a fuel. We press the water out of it and then burn it in a biomass boiler. But the water that we've pressed out of it, we actually put through an anaerobic digester and recover the methane off it. The water that's left after that goes back into the distillery because it's pure. So we're recovering every part that we can. After it's gone through our boilers, we then fire a, gas tur a, a steam turbine after it. So we're producing electricity, we're producing heat for the distillery, and we're also reducing the amount of water we use. So a win-win-win situation. The straw that's left over from the grain, that can be pelletized. This is Drew in France. 133 tonnes of straw per annum heats 40 homes. Go bigger, this is Lodz. 500,000 people benefit from this, and this uses forestry waste, agricultural biomass, i.e. straw, and coal. So we reduced the emissions by 35%, we reduced the NO, the NOx by 61%, and the SOx by 48%. So again, win, win, win. End of life wood, pallets, grade A wood. All finished its life, all needs something doing with it. Before it used to go into landfill. What we do with it is pelletise it. We pelletise it and it's burnt a lot in domestic and commercial boilers. But we have actually gone one step further and burning it industrial. I'll show you that in a second. This is our Chilton biomass plant. This is grade two and grade three. So the, the emissions have got to be controlled a lot better. And it's a 17.5 megawatt plant. So it produces a lot of electricity. The journey with the industrial side of pelletizing is this. This was our vision. This is our reality. This is an industrial sized wood burning plant. You might know the company when I tell it to you. This is Davidson in Cornwall. If you like Cathedral City cheese, that is produced by wood burning plant. And this little corner at the end here is our new plant. So what are the challenges? People think burning wood, we've done it for hundreds of years. The challenges is, is our challenges. Particulates, bits and pieces in the air, very small particles, gets into the lungs. NOx, CO, volatile organic compounds, sulfur dioxide, 
all comes out of wood. But even worse, polyaromatic hydrocarbons come out of wood. Dioxins and furins come out of wood. And also heavy metals. Where do the heavy metals come from? It's the acid rain that we sent over to places like Scandinavia. In that acid rain was heavy metals. It is now grown up into the wood and we're getting our own back because most of the pallets produced comes from wood from Scandinavia. So that are the challenges. What does the UK biomass supply look like at the moment? Average report 7.7 .7 million tonnes. But if you start adding all up, up together, we're not far from our max. And when we start importing wood to burn, then we're in an unsustainable situation. I was, my next is questions. This is Prince Charles in open uh, plant down at, uh, in Cornwall. But we'll save our questions until later. Thank you very much.